right, episode four. It's five o'clock somewhere with Mike and Ilana, except instead of Mike, we have John. Hey, John, thanks next for joining best thing. <laughs> What'd you say? The next best thing. The next best thing, yeah. Well, um, thanks for joining this new series. Today we're gonna be talking about equity, all things equity, because um, at Full Path we realized that equity data has been around in automotive for so long, but there was no real solution for how you actually activate and automate your, uh, your equity data, right? So like it sits there and you could pull lists and you can hope that your team reaches out and that your sales team is prioritizing based on, you know, who has positive equity, et cetera. But there's no way to really automate that and segment and put those guys into different audiences and then, you know, send out really relevant, really personalized marketing, emails, text based on equity status. So Full Path recently um, released our equity engine, our equity data layer that basically takes the equity data and allows us to do all sorts of magic with the equity data. I like um, what you're saying, so Alana, about, about making it automated. Because I remember I, I worked in the store for like 10 years. I remember being kind of like a young car guy and you might have miss quota or your closing ratio was low or something. So your GSM would send you to the service lane and you'd basically have to approach uh, people in the service lane and ask to appraise their trade. And it was always like, I don't know, a social norm that was hard to uh, overcome without being a really confident, experienced person. So kind of handling that, whether you have the information about their equity or you don't, it was a conversation that not all salespeople were kind of prepared to come up to the customer about. But if you're engaging these people with an equity conversation related to anticipated equity in their trade and what that could do for their payment or an in-stock vehicle they've been looking at on the site or they've had a chat with about, then it's just yeah. much more relevant. And then you break the ice through the email or the lead that pertains to the equity. And then the salesperson's like much more enabled to handle that conversation. Exactly. And also you'll get way more opportunities from there because they'll be resurfaced. You won't even necessarily need to think about the equity status or have to look at it before because it will sort of just be handed to you. Just and I know like people have had frustration in the space in the past because, you know, people there's one time we had this thing where like it printed off 300 leads. They're like, here's all your uh, service customers for the month. And it was 300 pieces of paper and the GM wanted them like printed off and handed to people that took, it was like, uh, you felt like you're an encyclopedia salesman. You had like a whole ream of paper that you're handing out to people. But then, you know, it was just like a very laborious thing. And then the, the accuracy of the information was like not even close to being relevant. So you couldn't really start a conversation on it. And then right. you were ultimately relying upon how much does your salesperson kind of want to get up, walk over there at the time the customer was anticipated to come in and start the conversation, where I think the success we've seen with the people who have adopted equity so far is they just like that it's happening. And then upon the conversion, like we're getting more conversions because the conversation's dialed in a little more low funnel, the person has more information about how their equity will affect their payment, their price, whatever. Right. And therefore you have a more qualified lead and somebody who's a little more approachable. Yeah, and also we talk a lot about ad suppression at Full Path, but I think that's also really important here. So it's like you have audience suppression, you have ad suppression. If someone is in a certain audience, but then all of a sudden they, you know, they might go, they might have positive equity. They now should get emails about that because that's a lot more interesting and appealing to them versus if they just bought a car and should not be getting equity emails, they should be getting, you know, something yeah. else uh, I mean, more targeted in their inbox and or their due for service, meaning the whole idea of being able to keep them fluid and in and out of these campaigns based on what their status actually is, is really important. So if you have that for other parts of your shopper journey and you don't have it for equity, then you're just missing. There's so much opportunity you're, you're losing. The customer expectation for personalization and relevance is at an all time high and only getting higher. So to send somebody something that's off base, irrelevant or not personalized is like now repugnant. Whether it, you know, so if we had, if we have the most personalized, most accurate information that's overlaid across behavior, I think is really the linchpin of the whole thing is like, are they on your site? Do they look at that car? Do they open emails about the car? So then when you send 
you know, hey, I anticipate you have $3,500 in equity on your vehicle. When you send that to them, then you kind of tie it into what they've been shopping. Then you're meeting the customer. You're kind of exceeding their expectations. From the consumer standpoint, you have much better experience because you're like, yes, that is the car I want. Nice to know I have equity. When can I come in? Exactly. And like, instead of getting just a random service email that they may or may not look at, this would just yep. be a way better way to get that person into the dealership. You're so, right. Um, and we're even seeing that. So we, when we released equity, we looked at the open rates of the emails based on other email, the bench lines and benchmarks, excuse me. And we saw that equity has 51% over benchmark average on open rates because it's so much more personalized and so much more appealing of an offer that people are in, interacting with those emails way more than they are potentially other emails. Other emails, by the way, should also, I mean, everyone should be working on increasing those benchmarks as well, but it's just so obvious that there's so much missed opportunity if you're not engaging your yeah. uh, equity audiences. And an exercise so, I've been doing thanks to our data team is kind of when I'm approaching some like a current customer to tell them about equity and kind of like sign them up is we pro forma out their, um, their current audience with outstanding loans. And you can basically see like the bell curve of people who have negative equity to the people who have marginal equity to anticipated positive equity and high positive equity. And then, you know, it, the correlation between people who have high equity and the people who submit leads, in one account, we found it to be like 90%. Like the, the engagement, the light bulb goes off in the customer's head when they're like, okay, I don't have down payment, or maybe I, I can just use my trade as down payment. That may not occur to them. They don't really know where they are relative to the depreciation curve. This is kind of a, a marketing reset and allows the customer to make an informed decision in the moment. Right, and I don't know if this is the point that you're making, but I agree that a lot of shoppers actually pro probably aren't even aware. So getting that act proactive information and offer will be like, they'll, they'll they would have never known about that offer beforehand. It's not like they're necessarily tracking their equity at all times. I'm sure some are, but not everyone is. At least that's what I'm understanding from just even talking to my friends about equity. Yeah. It's kind of like also a one more of a captive shop because think about this. Like if you aren't going to automate out equity offers or if you're even relying upon phone calls or something, you're then kind of like asking your customer to go shop a third party. You're going to go send them to some valuation tool that's off your site. So the name of the game is more like retain your customer, like nurture them, engage them, give them information, show them new vehicles that are relevant to them, engage their behavior. But if you can provide them the anticipated equity that kind of looks and sounds right, then you're keeping them all on your platform as opposed to driving them elsewhere, which I think is super important. Yeah. And it's, so it is really like an investment, like think about a stock investment because you're just bringing that customer back to you over and over again. Meaning they have positive equity now in three years, they're going to want a new car and they're going to need to service that car. So the more that you're the dealer of choice for that customer, it's an investment in that customer and it's an increase in lifetime value for every single shopper. So have you heard anything from like dealer feedback on how they change lead handling or like expectations of lead handling? Because <clears throat> I know that the way we kind of formulate an equity offer, we kind of disclose to the customer before we flip it on, like, hey, kind of anticipate this. And then when the leads start coming in, they, their team kind of knows what to expect. And they kind of know that the offer is like something they can kind of stand behind or they've augmented it in this manner or it's this or that. And then it kind of complements their lead handling procedure. Or at least it kind of like gives them a talk track because we can even yeah. give you a, we can like give you a dynamic list of, Anybody that's a high, medium, or low funnel shopper that has equity that's back on your site or opening emails or coming to the service lane tomorrow, we can alert you to all of that. But if you're, I think that if you take that information and you take the anticipated equity number and you give it to kind of like a green pea salesperson or somebody who's kind of like kind of in between new and intermediate you give them that information and they can make an outbound phone call to a customer as if they were the 10 year veteran of like, Hey, Alana, this is John from, uh, you know, so-and-so Chevy calling. I wanted to let you know, we're excited to see you in the service lane next week for your oil and tire rotation. But I also wanted to let you know that we anticipate that your vehicle is worth probably $7,000 more than what you owe on it. And if you rolled that into a 
your next purchase on an in-stock vehicle, then your payment would look like this, or you could you actually afford the car that you're looking for. Yeah. So right. it, and it also uh, instills like the human interaction a lot where, you know, it's, it's also kind of repulsive if that only ever lives on like a, like in a robot or like a chat tool or something, yeah. but it's enabling yeah. kind of the, the salesperson to serve the customer better in like a really sophisticated way. Well, I think like that's also what's so special, I think, about retail automotive in general is that the yeah. AI will never replace the salesperson. It's such an important component to it, but it really needs to enable, empower the sales team to just be better at their jobs, whether you are new or vet or a veteran salesperson. So I think you just mm -hmm. you explained that really well. And I think all of the AI products that any dealership will implement should have that factor, right? It's all about, yeah. the, we always talk about this technology, people, process, but that was that's like a beautiful example of technology, people and process. Like you need the training and the scripts, you need the people who are good at it and you need the tech to actually empower and enable them. So there you go. Yeah, we're at that hybrid, like in the tech curve right now, we're at like the human, human robot hybrid where we can lean mm -hmm. on the insight of AI to yield out yeah. you know, all the behavior and then enable the salesperson, this GM or whatever to make a discretionary decision on what to say based on all the data available to you. And sometimes we can like verbatim list out what to say, but I mean, yeah. it, it's a really neat time to work in automotive. Yeah. And just to uh, give a little bit perspective about how like the power of equity and equity data within a CDP, we haven't talked about that yet on this episode, but I think it is important to understand this fits in. I mean, we talked a little bit about suppression, but this really fits into the overall marketing strategy and the overall data strategy, right? So you need to have that unified customer profile, the 360 view. You need to understand what's happening with your shoppers in, in order to actually activate this data in a smart, intelligent way that will bring the customer in because it has to be in context, right? And that's yeah. the beauty of having a CDP. You consolidate all your data, you, you know, you, all your previously siloed data, you bring it all together so that you can then activate and automate the best marketing. When at Full Path, we did that with you know, digital ads and driving traffic to the website and then actually interacting on the website and then, you know, a little bit of follow-up. Once we bring in service and equity, you're actually you, hitting the entire customer journey and enabling dealers to create customers th for life with yeah. the sophisticated AI and the sophisticated customer data platform. So um, on that note, we'll talk about two customer journeys that we can't show our, I can't show the screen, unfortunately, because of PII and just, it's sensitive information, but we'll talk through really cool customer journeys. Well, you can see this customer was hit with all sorts of messaging and, you know, understands the brand of this dealership because they've been seeing ads and they've been opening emails. Once they got hit with uh, equity email, which was super targeted for them and timely, they opened it, went to the website and um, submitted a lead and then bought the car which is something that we, in this specific case for this specific shopper, might not have happened if you don't have the equity piece, right? And you can say the same thing for a price drop or for service, meaning at the end of the day, you have to have the full understanding of where that shopper is in their journey so that you can send them that message. I don't know if you have another example. I think you have another example of a, a shopper journey you can walk us through, but just like the idea of being able to take a, an entire shopper journey and understand exactly where they are and send them the right message, whether it is equity, service, sale, et cetera, I mean, that's the power of, of AI enabled technology. In yeah, I know you and I were talking about an example of uh, a lady yeah. who received it. It was kind of like a high funnel messaging, like you may have equity in your vehicle. And then immediately it was a woman who kind of like snubbed previous messaging because yeah, right. an equity true. offer is innately just like the most enriched personalization. So it's, it, it's a, it goes beyond getting the first name right. And it goes beyond uh, vehicle of interest that you were looking on the site. But then it expounds on that into, hey, you know, we can see in the DMS you have this uh, loan, right? And we've amortized out uh, what you owe. And then we've cross-referenced that against a likely vehicle value. And then we've gone ahead and done the work for you. This is about what you, this is how much more you can anticipate than what you own, owe on the vehicle. And then it really wasn't until that person received that email until the light bulb went off. They click it, open it like nine times. And then they go to the site, convert and buy a Ram truck. So, um, yeah, I mean, it like baseline equity is just like the ultimate enrichment of an offer. And you can, what you were talking about is 
integrating that into a full marketing platform with automation and AI insight. And that will give you the highest yield because you're overlaying customer behavior on top of customer data, on top of like vehicle data and offer data. So if you can just combine all these things, serve them out in an automated fashion, and it costs you nothing, but you just get, you know, your emails from our tool, we've seen the emails with equity open at like 50% or above when we're emailing yeah. a ton of people per month. So it's just yeah. innately the thing people, are, the consumer is looking for. Yeah, totally. Awesome. Well, John, unfortunately, Mike could not make it's five o'clock summer with Ilana and Mike. Or probably Mike and Ilana, skiing. So. He's what? He's, He's skiing. probably He's skiing. Yeah. Like, he took his family snowboarding. Anyway, <laughs> you. it was awesome to have you on. And I'm sure we'll have more guests in the future. And you should catch us next time on LinkedIn, um, Mike Claccio and myself. And sometimes we have awesome guests like John Frederick. If you have any comments or questions on equity, feel free to comment here. We'd love to answer them for you. John seems to be the, the expert here on, on equity. So uh, awesome. Thanks, Alana. Good connecting. Thank you.